So Miniumite, you know, an exabyte is a thousand petabytes, and a petabyte is a thousand terabytes, and a terabyte is a thousand gigabytes. So, a, pe a exabyte is one billion gigabytes, which is a lot of gigabytes. An exabyte sounds absurd, being that your normal flash drive is 32 gigs and your normal computer is 1,000 gigs or 1 terabyte, but it's really not. I will convince you why it's not, because of the price, the reason why you should do this, and the value of doing this. So, what is the price? So, uh, Sega Exos X20, which are 20 terabyte high density drives for $450 a piece on Newegg at the time of the recording, which is April 3rd, 2022. Um, so that would mean for one exabyte, it would be 22.5 million USD, which is a lot of money, a really lot of money, but there's some really rich people. Um, so you need 50,000 of these, which is a lot of drives. I can't even comprehend how much 50,000 drives would be, but it would be pallets with the hard drives that are this big. This is an 160 gig drive, and it would be this big, except they'd even be a little thicker. And they would, uh, there'd be 50,000 of these, which is insane and cost $22 million, which would be a lot of good houses. And I haven't even taken it, uh, price into consideration of all the servers you need to do, the data centers, data centers, and all the other things need to be accounted for, like taxes and stuff. Which would probably be another 25 million ish. So, a total of 50 million ish dollars. For the reason, like, why would someone want to spend 50 million plus dollars on one exabyte of storage just to brag that they have a billion gigabytes worth of storage? No. The reason is because of profit. That's really the reason of any business adventure. Uh, so you would have, of course, one million terabytes of storage, and for fifty million dollars, that's not too terrible, especially for the fact that very, very, very few companies have that. Just to take in consideration, all the YouTube videos combined would, I've I've done my research, and that'd be around seventy-five petabytes worth of videos and everything on Facebook combined would be 450 petabytes. Exabyte is a thousand petabytes. So you could put everything in YouTube and Facebook combined and fit it all in one. So there's, yeah, a lot of reasons why someone would want this. You can back up everything, um, especially if you're a big business on, it's just, uh, you can do a lot of things. I've spec one exabyte into AWS for the next slide, and that would cost uh, 25 million a month just on that alone through AWS. So if you host it yourself, you will get a lot. You can also, a lot of companies need backups, and you could have uh, like a second or a third backup you might need uh, off-site backups in case your building burns down or floods or someone destroys all your servers then you need an off-site backup so uh, you can get all your data back especially if you're a huge company like let's say your YouTube or Facebook and all they don't have any backups and let's say their uh, server got flooded or whatever I don't know or maybe a hurricane came and all these hard drives, they have little spinning disks and they're really fragile. So even if you drop it on the floor, it might damage it. So if every single one of them wiped, all data on YouTube would be gone and that would be catastrophic. But if you had two, three backups, maybe even four, so in case all everything fails, you can 
maybe in, it might still take a month, but eventually all your footage will be back. All the YouTube. And this, in theory, should fit in 10,000 square foot. Now, 10,000 square foot sounds a lot, but there are buildings that are 50,000 square foot. Let me show you. I go for data center for sale. So while that's loading, uh, I'll tell you why I wanted to be on this adventure. The reason why I wanted to do this was, honestly, just I thought it would be pretty fun to research this. Let's see, there's one. This is one in Indianapolis. It's for sale. Let's see, uh, see, there's one in Maine that's for sale for. See, that's 52,000 square foot. Now, I think these things are millions of dollars. Um, let's find a better website. See, look, this one's 100,000 square foot. See, look at all this stuff. Whoa. See, it has all sorts of stuff. That's a huge data center. How much are they asking for? Let's see, this probably costs 10... 12 million dollars. Really nice data center. See, these are huge. See, that's what a data center, how expensive it would be. So, the data center is probably the most expensive part, uh, or one of the most expensive part, especially if you're building a very large data center. Now, you could probably buy some warehouse to like it it's just 10,000 feet is a really really good this is a high density environment and 20 terabyte drives are the most you can get unless you go tape drive and that's just not viable and then the value uh how like how much money would you produce? So, as I said, one exabyte on AWS would cost you 25 million USD a month, which is tons of money. And that's being all hard drive with zero SSDs, which we have all hard drives in this configuration. But if you wanted to have it, SSDs it would be very expensive. Um, probably be more like 500 million if you did NVMe SSDs. Uh, but yes, you could even if you charge, uh, let's say, even if you charge $10 million a month, you'll still get your money back in, in a year, which is really good considering EWS is charging $25 million. There's also more reasons that you could do this. Uh, you wanted to supply for a lot of just there's all sorts of random uh, reasons why you might want to do this um, you could probably think of yours your reason for this um the prices so as I expected this out for the racks UPS and like etc would be about three and a half million dollars. The hard drives would be, what I say, 22.5 million, but I'll just put 25 million because maybe something will break or maybe they're more expensive. The data center would, the data center would probably cost 10 million dollars, as I showed those really nice data centers. That cost 10 million dollars. And just the bare bones servers, just the servers without the hard drives, and you put the servers in there, or the hard drives, and the and extra parts. Like, you might be able to get them cheaper without RAM or CPUs or whatever, and then you put those in there. So the total price would be around $480 million. Uh, in my next calculations, I just round up to $50 million. Uh, I got these numbers uh, because uh, that's even on the higher end, because you could... Even if you really wanted to, you could probably put 
uh, just, it would be really stupid, but you could just build, like, a really big shed and put all these servers in. In theory, you could do that, but it would just be a lot better to have a data center. And then you need, of course, all the servers themselves, and those might be expensive, depends on where you bought them, they might be more than 10 million. These are just uh, my calculations, and I'm not a professional in any means, so someone more smarter than me could figure out uh, an exact price. The ROI, so this is what I spent most of my time on calculating all these. So what I made is the first year you would have made $25 million. So the first year you're always going to make the most because um, in this situation, after the first year, maybe another company will copy you. Or maybe uh, every year uh, technology gets better and maybe they release a 25 terabyte hard drive for the same price. And then companies will be able to charge less for the same. So every year I'm deducting $5 million from this profit. So they uh so it just keeps because every year of course technology gets better uh so the first year we're gonna make 25 million USD which will cover half your debt okay and then you have you'd still be in the negative the first year the second year you'll make another 20 million you'll still be in 5 million debt then by the third year, you'll make another 15 million, and then you'll finally be in the 10 million positives, which is really good. And then the fourth year, you'll make another 10 million for a total of 20 million. And then after that, you'll do the same progress again, and maybe you'll do a 5 exabyte project or something. So and then it will just, because technology keeps getting better and people need more stuff. It's the end of the slideshow, but. I'll show you uh, more stuff. So if I just look up uh, X O byte uh, storage right here, it's one billion gigabytes, of course. So um, uh. Backblaze actually in 2020 they got one exabyte of storage, which is really impressive. But they've uh, they actually got it, and it's pretty interesting. I don't know if it says it in here, but they did actually get all that. So it says in order to store all the data, Backblaze uses 122,658 hard drives. So they must be on average if they wanted. Uh, all there if they wanted exactly one exabyte which I know they've passed it since then and accounting for RAID and other stuff you're it's probably gonna be around uh, so they must be getting around 10 terabytes hard drive versus the 20 terabyte hard drive and that just makes it a lot higher density so basically what black base black Black Backblaze does is they just um you can get cloud storage and stuff. It's kind of like Google Drive. So uh let's see ZDNet they made an X byte too. Oracle Sun storage not just new tape the drive this morning. Terabyte long capacity. So these are just examples. You can go on the rabbit hole and research all sorts of things. But like, even you could even make money with one petabyte, which would cost like what ten, twenty thousand. Um. So the one exabyte project is just an idea I have, and I don't think I personally will ever get one exabyte of storage unless technology storage just goes crazy. In 50 years, maybe, who knows what will happen. Uh, but I guess 50 years ago, uh, like, saying one megabyte was crazy like one exabyte is right now. So, yeah, this is my pitch. I'm not sure if it will ever 
happen, but hopefully. And bye.